got up at 4.30. Headed to the shoot, baby. Right and early. you guys but nice old black french press coffee nothing can beat it anyways welcome back to the channel welcome to the new house speaking of the new house let me show y'all something real quick y'all see that y'all see that dude freaking lamp keeps turning on and off the alarm system put in this like automatic lamp thing i can turn it on and off from my phone i don't know what i'm gonna use that for but it's cool anyways welcome to the new house First video ever done in here. Out of frame, there's a bunch of boxes. You know, moving in, moving in something. Anybody that's done it, bought a new house, moved in, they know, but I was just so worried on the closing costs and getting everything closed. And I, I didn't even think about furnishing the house and now that's what we're doing. It's fun, but it's pretty expensive. So by the title and the thumbnail, you can probably tell that I shot for Realtree. I shot a, a commercial with Hannah Barron. So we're gonna talk about how I got the job, what I put into that job and, um, just fun behind the scenes stuff. Hannah Barron's like, you know, a huge, huge character. She's awesome. She was great. She's just like she is in real life on social media. That's what I think makes her so special, why people gravitate towards her and kind of so polarizing. Um, so I'm gonna show you all that. So let's get right into the video. So I've shot a few things with Realtree. I've gone to Louisiana with them. I went to West Monroe, shot some stuff for Phil Robertson and the whole Duck Dynasty game, that was awesome. There's actually a documentary that I shot on Phil Robertson. I didn't edit any of it, but all the shots are mine. And that was on Realtree's uh, page. And then I uh, also went to California with them, which was so cool. We shot some good stuff up there. So I've done a few things with, with Realtree. They don't, they usually do things internally and they're such a cool company. So for this project specifically, they wanted me to spearhead the whole thing. This is the first time they've gave me full range to a video. And they just said, hey, this is like gonna be a, a minute ad that will run on YouTube, on social. And we want you to just write it out and do your own thing. We, we like what you do, just do it. So I was like, all right, cool. So I wrote out, wrote out a full script um, and shot list for it. And that's kind of what I want to get into this, this video. If you've seen my past videos, you know, I harp on pre-production. I just think it's so important and it helps the shoot run, run so smoothly. I, I'll say that time and time again, pre-production is production. For this particular video, I, was, I wanted to find a theme, I wanted to find a tone. And the theme for that video was the early bird gets the worm. And, and the tone was hard work. You know, it was early mar morning, low light. And that, that posed some challenges because you only have a small window. But that was the theme and the tone. And I, that's kind of what I wanted to harp on on this video is listen you got for every film you do every every video you do that needs to be front and center and it might change actually as you film because this almost changed because the day we got there the day that we were filming it was overcast and, and kind of rainy the whole time so i didn't get those early morning shots that i wanted i didn't get the light that i wanted but guess what it gave me more time to film because it kind of looked like it was the early morning the whole time so i wrote the script and the script ended up being pretty good. Everybody loved it. I, I, I let Realtree read it. I let uh, Hannah read it just to make sure that she was comfortable with all that. And we had actually had to take out a lot of stuff because she she couldn't use some of the stuff because of her branding. The, who she works with, she couldn't use DSG's apparel, all that stuff. I don't want to get into the weeds. So that's why it's so important to make sure you share all your ideas with your client, with the talent, just to make sure that they're on the same page. So we got that finalized. And, um, and once that was done, all I had to really do is just get packed up and head down to near Troy, South Alabama, and uh, do a tech scout. So I brought more than I thought I would. I got two tripods, light stands, lighting, drone stuff, camera, extra stuff more drone stuff, more lighting, GoPro stuff. So it ended up being, and even a hazer, ended up bringing a little bit more than I thought I would.
that would be there with her daughter and she is very familiar with Just got done with the Tech Scout, um, middle of nowhere, Alabama. I didn't want to show y'all the Tech Scout because I don't really know the talent that well. But uh, I do want to show y'all how beautiful Alabama is. I know it gets a bad rap, but man, it, it really is awesome. And y'all got to check this out because tomorrow I don't think I'm going to show you all this because it's going to be raining. But just check this place out. So the Tech Scout was was great. I didn't film any of that because I was a little too, I mean, that was the first time meeting them. I didn't want to just pull out a camera and start filming everything. So I really just wanted to get to know Hannah, her family, <clears throat> and that's what I did because I just wanted to be really comfortable with them the next day. I was going to go there really early in the morning, um, which we did. So I woke up at around 4, left my hotel at 4.30, and got to the site at right around 5.30 so we could start filming. And since I'd went, been there the day before, all of the shots I had in my mind were, you know, so clear. I kind of thought on it the night before. I kind of somewhat meditated on it the night before. So I was ready to go. About to set some interviews up on this porch right here. Um, I'll show you what I'm thinking. And we went right into it. I had all the shots ideas written out, and I was like, okay, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to do. And not all of them worked out, but for the most part, you know, it went pretty well. It was, it was a run and gun shoot, so it wasn't like I, I was going to light every scene, and a lot of it was outside anyways. But I wasn't going to light every scene how I'd normally do on a lot of interior shots. Um, and it was just on social, so it's not like a feature film. I would just say this, this shoot was probably the most one of the most smooth shoots I've had just because... Hannah and I got along, me and her dad got along. Um, it was just easy going. She was really, really talented. And that's another thing that I would say is, if you can get a talented person um, that has a lot of charisma and it's just good in front of the camera, they just make your job so much easier and you kind of just let them do their thing because this wasn't a stage shoot really. This was more so a lifestyle shoot that I was gonna kind of script into something uh, larger or more groomed on, um, in, in post-production. I just kind of wanted her to be herself, but I did want to sit her down and, and get some interviews out of her. I don't even know if I was going to use those, but she did an amazing job. She's kind of nervous with that because that's just not her thing, but she, she killed it. And I wanted her voice because she has such a unique voice. Everybody knows Hannah Barron's voice. Alabama's home. We travel everywhere in the world, but there's no place like home. Alabama will always be home no matter how far we are from it. Hunting's been one of the biggest parts of my life for my whole life. Killed my first deer when I was eight, and I used to go with Daddy when I was, well, shoot, since I could walk. He'd build these little blinds out of pine limbs and stuff because I was too little to climb tree stands. And in high school, instead of playing sports, I hunted. I was the weird girl that hunted back then, so it's always been a really big part of my life. Once you hear a voice, you're like, okay, that's Hannah Barron. You know, everything she does, people, a lot of people gravitate towards. So I just wanted to make sure that it was her voice that was speaking. She was worried about how some of that stuff isn't what she would say. Yeah, that's true. And I, so we, we changed up a little bit. Like, how would you say this? How would you say this? Um, as long as the sentiment's the same, we don't have to make sure that everything on the script is said exactly how I had the, the voiceover being said. So we changed a lot of the stuff up. Um, and a lot of stuff was changed too and, and taken out because we couldn't shoot everything that was on the script or on the shooting list. That's another thing, you have to be very flexible with stuff like this, things don't go your way. You gotta be thinking on your feet. As filmmakers, and I say this all the time, we're problem solvers, that's what we do. So all in all, man, this shoot was, this shoot was awesome. Like, I just wanted to share this shoot with you because it was fun. These are the type of shoots that 
remind you why you do this. A lot of this stuff I do is corporate, which is fine. I really do love helping bigger businesses and, and brands promote and brand their actual company. But with this type of stuff, outdoor stuff, working with talent like that, it reminds you why you do what you do. Why well, we got into filmmaking and it's so important to have projects like these that are almost like they feel like passion projects, but they're not. I mean, you're getting paid to do it. So I just wanted to share this project with you guys. I hope y'all liked it. It was fun. We had a great time. I usually say in these videos too, it's like, I'm not a, a technical guy. I'm more of a conceptual guy. I want to show you guys what I did. You don't necessarily need to know the specs of the camera. You don't need to know all that stuff. It's all about the story. And if you can get the pre-production right, that's half the battle. That's just what I wanted to harp on on this video. It's tone, theme, tone, theme. What is it? You have to have a clear vision on that. And once you have that, you did your job if you're able to capture that through video. Otherwise, the video kind of comes out flat. It feels like there's no substance there. Like, oh, that was cool. It was a cool video. Great visuals. But what, what, what were we watching? So that's just kind of what I want to hit on this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes stuff. I love doing it. I'm going to try to get better and better about showing more and more behind the scenes, but it's pretty hard when it's a one-man band. Um, eventually, I think I will start hiring people out to do some behind the scenes stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Smash that like button. Give me, give me a little sub. Leave me a comment. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any suggestions for videos, let me know. I mean, I'm all ears. I would like to put out one a week. I know that's, that's, a, that's a, a big ask when you're doing this full time, but anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all later.